Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program, which is called Things We Said Today. This is a weekly podcast that concerns itself with what's going on in Beatle news. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, best known for my syndicated radio program, which is called Every Little Thing, the Beatles program. And I'm being joined by my co-host, the head of Beatles Examiner and lots of Examiner columns, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Hi, Ken. Hi, everyone. On today's show, we're going to be talking about a brand new release that has just come out. November 13th is the actual date of 2012 for the Beatles vinyl box set, which is in stereo. And I think certain Beatle fans will be quite excited about this. These are the fans that, for the most part, grew up on vinyl and are loyal, loyal to vinyl. And... Um, this is a limited edition, the box set, but the individual Beatles albums are going to be also available by themselves, individually. And so, Steve, what are your thoughts about the fact that Capitol Records has gone to this length to release vinyl here in 2012 on the Beatles? It's strange. I, I kind of expected it, but at the same time, I wondered how many people would, were going to get excited about it. And it appears that they're doing a, a good job drumming up the excitement. They've taken the uh, CD masters. They've used basically the same masters they used for the CDs, but without the limiting. I talked yesterday to Simon McGee, one of the engineers, and so it'll be interesting to to uh, hear the the, diff- the sound differences and what, how the fans think the two compare, or and how they like one over the other, or whether they even care. Hmm. A lot of people, I know I saw some comments from a lot of people that because, especially because of the, the costs on the box sets, they weren't going to bother to go with the the vinyl set. What is the uh, list price? Three nineteen. Right now, I'm looking at three nineteen on Amazon, which still that's a lot. I will say the box is very heavy. This is not a small little box like the CD sets were. Right. This is a huge box, and it's it's extremely heavy. And for those that don't know, this is every Beatles album, including Magical Mystery Tour, treated as an album, along with Past Masters, Volumes 1 and 2. Right, which is is a double album. Right. It's not two separate albums. And and they've done a lot of the the same kind of authentication as far as the labels go. The first albums up to Sgt. Pepper have Parlophone albums, uh, Parlophone labels. Magical Mystery Tour has a capital label. Well, that's how they did it on the CD. Right. And then all the other albums, the later albums, all have Apple. On the recently remastered CDs, I right. should say. Right. But i got to tell you, I'm really impressed with the fact that they're even doing this. I mean, if you look you at... You mean going, going to the extent that they're going, or, or just doing it at well, all? Well, both. Both, because if what matters to most businesses is the bottom line, as much as I've heard that there's been a comeback for vinyl, you got to figure that it's still very limited, the number of people out there that are, that are going to care about this. And there are people who, as I said, are very loyal when it comes to vinyl, and for good reason. Many fans feel... And I'm not even going to debate this because I even agree that, that vinyl has a warmer sound to it. There are some people that prefer the sound of vinyl any day over to the sound of CDs, which can be kind of um, have a harsh sound to it, very bright. Um, and some people don't would prefer the vinyl sound. So the mere fact that there's less of a demand for something like this and that capital is addressing this and meeting the needs of those people that actually care about this, that alone I'm just so impressed with. I mean, they don't have to do this. No, they don't. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know if the impressed is the word that I would use, but it's interesting in the light of the fact that there are so many other things, and I'm not even going to go into the, you know, let it be DVD or anything like that, but, I mean, there are so many other, there are, for example, I know American fans have been asking about another uh, capital the Capital Albums box set, right? And they've been wa- they've been wanting that. Would the response in America be bigger for a Capital Albums box set as opposed to the stereo box set? That's I, a good question. I kind of think it would actually. And when they've 
they've gone to the lengths they've gone with the stereo box. I mean, it's not just it's not just the albums in a wooden box. It's the albums, and they've gone through and they've replicated all the labels and they've replicated all the graphics. And there's also a huge, huge book, hardcover book, hmm. with lots of pictures. That um, and some of them were not in the in the CDs, uh, and it's pictures that they're, they're not all familiar pictures. So right. the, the question is, at what point do you say, "Well, this is okay, but I would rather have this," or you know, "Do you care at all?" And and there there are a lot of there are comments I've seen that pe- some people don't care. Given, especially given the cost. I mean, I'm sure there are people that will go out and buy the, you know, some of the single albums. I think if if it was me, and I had to go out and decide which one of these albums I was going to buy, if I was going to buy any at all, Pepper would be the one I would buy, and maybe Abbey Road. So Pepper and Abbey Road, I think, would be the two that I would absolutely have to have. Why? Because they're your favorites, or because sonically you think that they are the best sounding? Sonically, I think. I probably also would get um, with the Beatles or Please Please Me, too, because I've always had the thing for the early uh, tracks in stereo. I've always really, really liked, uh, even though the mixes were in some, pl- in some um, places really terrible. The, f- the, first two albums are, the first two albums are difficult for me to listen to in stereo. After that, most of, for me anyway, from A Hard Day's Night on, I prefer most of the tracks in stereo. You know, it's it's funny. Way back in the old days of of eight track tapes, I had uh, a British eight track of um, the British mix of Roll Over Beethoven that fades in from one side to the other side. I actually liked that. I know it was, it was horrible, and I know a lot of people have complained about that, but I actually liked that. Hmm. It's funny. Okay. <laughs> I'm hey, strange. to each his own. You know, I, I, I'm not going to be critical of your taste. No. Maybe but not I, now. I, 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 I always, <laughs> yeah. But I always have, like, the early songs in stereo, and one of the things I liked about the stereo box sets was having those four albums finally in real stereo, even though the bootleggers had had had, had them both in the American versions and in the, the British versions. But it was great to finally get those. In, in real stereo. And on on the other side of the coin, I actually didn't think I was going to appreciate listening to the mono albums, and I actually like the mono albums. Those are, they really are so much better than I actually thought they would be. And I'm, and what's funny is, when they came out in 09, the word was, they're very limited, but they're still out there. You can still get them. Right. They pressed more than they said they were going to. Right. And actually, it's funny you bring that up because I don't know if you noticed in the press release for the box set well over a month ago, they did say that they're planning a mono box set for vinyl for next year. Yes, and that when I talked to Simon McGee, he confirmed that, and they've been saying that all along. But yeah, that is kind of funny that they're going to do a, a mono box set. And it'll be interesting to see where that goes and how, how many albums that'll be. That would be that would be quite interesting, quite quite interesting. Well, anyway, I I do I am impressed with the fact that Capital is even doing this because to me, when I hear about vinyl, I'm thinking this is going to appeal to the people who grew up on vinyl. So those are the first generation, the earliest Beatles fans. And when you think about it, most sales today of music are done by download and by CD. So the mere fact that they're even doing this. I applaud them for that. I will say I do think that the the price of the box set really is very steep. But still, the fact that they're even acknowledging that there are fans out there that want this, you know, I, I have to applaud Capital for that. And the fact that they're even going to do the mono box next year. Just knowing that there are people that, that are waiting for that, and they're, do, they're going to do it. And if you're going to if you're going to get any of the albums, or if you if you're thinking if you're going to get a few at least a few of the albums. Do what you can and get the whole set, because, like I said, the set is the. It's not just the fact that it's in this big wooden box that's very heavy, that is expensive and all that stuff. 
if you're going to spend that much money on the the vinyl albums, I mean the days of you know 598 vinyl albums are long long gone. The prices I'm looking at the price of, for example on Amazon right now of Sgt. Pepper is twenty three dollars twenty twenty three fifty basically on vinyl. And on vinyl. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so if you're going to pay that much for vinyl, you're probably better off to just you should probably consider getting the the vinyl box set. It's okay. Probably worth more to do that, and you get the and you get that big hardcover book on top of it. Right. Another um, issue is that some of the people who will be buying this are actually doing it for the collectability of it. Mm-hmm. So there are people who are audiophiles that care mainly about the sound of the music, and then there are other people who are buying it because they have to have it, and maybe they had previous box sets. There was a British Beatles box set that came out. I think it was in the early 80s, the Japanese Beatles box set. There are people who do collect those things, so I think they'll be excited about this, especially yeah. based on the, the packaging, as you were just saying. And not only that, I, I will say that they are making an extra effort to promote this thing because as we speak, we have heard about in New York and in Los Angeles on November the 13th on its release, they're going to have a, uh, a double decker bus in, uh, in New York and LA at three different locations. And in the bus, they're going to be selling all kinds of Beatle merchandise. They're going to be selling the vinyl albums, CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, and even T-shirts that were custom-made for each city. There's one for New York and there's one for L.A. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they're going around in New York and in L.A., and they're going to be selling Beatle merchandise. And it's only for one day, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, just the fact I'm that they're doing that. I'm actually surprised they're only doing it in two cities. I kind of wish they were doing it in at least a couple more. They're not doing it in the Bay Area where I am, unfortunately, uh, uh, you'll be able to go. Uh, are you going to try and hit one of those? No, but I will try to go to one of the, the listening events, which is another yeah, thing. I'm, I'm definitely going to hit that, too. Um, that's actually a lot more interesting that they're doing that. They have not, they did not do that to my, as I recall, with the CDs. And um, they are doing it with these. They're having listening sessions in a number of cities, uh, in 10 cities, starting uh, Monday the 19th in San Francisco and going to December 7th in, according to the schedule, in Washington, D.C. Right. And so actually, all, all those locations, by the way, you can find on the Beatles Examiner article that Steve wrote, if you want to yes. if you want to be a part of any of those listening events. And not right, only that, right. just reading what it says on the press release here, and I'll read mm -hmm. it for all the folks, it says um, that high-end audio retailers in several U.S. cities will host listening events for the Beatles stereo vinyl remasters. Each retailer will present the new Beatles vinyl on completely handmade British hi-fi systems. I thought that was kind of interesting, the way they... Like, handmade systems. Interesting. I wonder what that's going to be uh, going to be like. Yeah. Um, hmm. It says, with demonstrations of audible improvements in the new vinyl on a variety of turntables and associated equipment. So the fact that they're even doing that. Now you've got all these different locations, San Francisco, L.A., Dallas, Chicago, Boston, New York, Philly, Washington, and they're all listed on your, your article. And right. the folks can uh, go and check out the music themselves in specially located uh, stores. In special hi-fi stores. <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be uh, very interesting. It's going to be interesting to to hear the comparisons on those. Definitely. So this was well thought out, I think, as far as a promotion is concerned. I'm glad. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad they're doing the listening events. The bus thing kind of is kind of weird, but the 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 listening sessions are definitely ca catering to. The you know the real dedicated fans and that's a good thing. That's that's definitely for the audiophile, right? And, and there's no admit there's no admission either, so that's I mean, they're free. So that's even better. I mean, it's not going to cost you to get into them. So that's to make it easier for when you buy the box set. True. <laughs> 
true. But uh, again, I'm just very happy that the Capitol is even bothering to do this and that next year they're going to do the mono set for vinyl. So it is acknowledging that there are fans out there that care about these things. And in this day and age, when all that really matters is the bottom line with a lot of companies, if something like this, if they're not expecting huge sales, just the fact that they're doing it, I'm just really impressed that they're going to these lengths to promote it. Right. The interesting thing is going to be the reaction after after the set comes out and whether it, how much interest there is in it and whether it's going to fade out you know, right away. Because vinyl, I mean, as much as vinyl is out there and it is in stores and it has made a comeback over the past few years, I wonder if, you know, if there's going to be a lot of, you know, how long this, the interest in this is going to hold. I don't know. Right. I honestly don't know. And I have heard that the Beatles' Abbey Road album was one of the best sellers of vinyl albums, of rock albums. It has it, been a consistent best vinyl seller over the last couple of years, as, as I recall. Yeah. It sold, so, it sold better than the other Beatle albums. Right. Vinyl has always been an attraction, you know, with Beatle fans. And the fact that they're going to this length for the box set and for, you know, for the whole thing is, is you know, is quite interesting. And it'll be... Uh, they've announced the mono set next for next year, and you have to wonder kind of a little bit what happens if this really does not do well. Do they still put out the mono set? I think they will. They might print less copies, figuring that it won't sell as well. Because no either, matter what, I, I still think that stereo is going to outsell mono anyway. Right. Either that or they maybe reconfigure the set. Hmm. And they do it, in other words, instead of doing it in the deluxe wooden box like they have with the vinyl, or with the stereos, they do it a little differently. Yeah. Not such a glorious box to, to cut back on the price. It's kind of interesting. Just like I said, there are certain fans out there that are loyal to vinyl. There'll be certain Beatle fans that'll say, well, if you're going to listen to the Beatles, it's best to listen to them on vinyl. There are certain fans that feel the same way about the recordings in mono. So, just like I was impressed with the fact that the Capitol and EMI put out a mono CD set in 2009, it's the same thing here. And I actually thought the mono CD set was was very nice, was, was a nice idea. After doing comparison listenings between uh, Pepper, for example, listening to the mono Pepper, and the, which is the way I originally bought it, and the stereo Pepper, really? which I did not hear, yeah which I did not hear for at least several months after it came out. Because we had one of those little dinky Sears silver tone, I don't know if you remember them, the little, there were these uh, mono, it was a mono record player. Mm -hmm. That was the way I, that was, we went down and bought Pepper and that was the way I bought it. I bought, the, for one, the stereo Pepper at the time was, was um, cost more money. It wasn't the same price. I didn't oh. know that. I didn't know there were different prices back then. Oh yeah, there were. I think it was like a dollar more more for the stereos <laughs> back then. Wow. Yeah, I don't, That's I, don't interesting. I don't I don't I don't I don't know why, but there were there were price differences. They Maybe it was just your store that you went to. We went to a discount it, it was a discount department store. I, uh, I can't remember the name of it. Um but yeah, that that's the way it was. Yep, that's that's what it was. But I, I, yeah, like I said, I had not heard, I did not hear the Stereo Pepper for quite a while after. Uh, and listening to the mono CDs brought back a lot of memories. Hmm. Well, lot I, of memories. I've been used to the Stereo my whole life. Mm -hmm. So then when you, when you really listen seriously to the mono and you hear some of the differences, it, it's a bit shocking. Right. You know, there's certain right. songs where there's very noticeable differences. Maybe we should do a show on that. <laughs> when the, the when the mono uh, box comes out, I think we'll do that. Who okay. knows? Yeah, there's definitely a... Well, there's people that have written whole books on that stuff, uh, of hmm. the differences between the two and, and all that all that stuff. And don't, you know, if I, what's funny is, you know, if you were to give me a test on that, I would probably do horribly. I'm just... <laughs> 
Well, you know, so, I'm finding more and more people saying that mono is the way to listen to the Beatles. And, you know, the Beatles never really hammered that into our heads. Their preference was the mono, and that's what they they listened to in the studio. That's what they they approved. They spent more right. time on the mono mixes than the stereo mixes. So for that reason, there are some people who feel, well, if that's the way the Beatles heard it, that's how we should be listening to it. But I don't believe in preaching to people what they should listen to and what they shouldn't listen to. If you're brought up on the stereo and you're used to it and you're comfortable with it and you prefer that, then, you know, all, all the more power to you. But um, it is nice to have those differences and to be right. able to, to hear some of the subtle differences and some that are very noticeable. Peter Asher is the same way on the mono because I, when I uh, was talking with him one time, I asked him about the uh, about the stereo, uh, the stereo Peter Asher, the Peter and Gordon albums, and he was adamant. He said Peter and Gordon were very much for the mono. They that was what they preferred. Hmm. So they were just like the Beatles the same way. Yeah, and there's a lot of records from the '60s in particular that were hits in stereo that to me sound like crap. <laughs> so I can certainly understand how people can feel that way. Certain mm -hmm. songs were just not mixed well in stereo. So, but then on the on the other hand, for some reason, I there are some songs that I prefer in stereo. Um, Definitely, it's just, just me. It's just me. I don't know. Whatever. It's a whole other show, Steve. <laughs> it's a whole other show. Yeah, we could we could probably spend a couple of shows on that. Yeah. So. So, the Beatles vinyl box set comes out in stereo on November the thirteenth. For those of you who are interested. And that'll put a wrap on this show. Now, if any of you would like to get in touch with us, we have a brand new email address, which is things we said today radio show at gmail.com. And also, we're encouraging you, if you happen to be a musician, to help us out with our show because we're looking for a theme song here. And this would be something that we would play at the top of the show and at the end of the show, just an instrumental bed that you would consider to be Beatlesque. Something that sounds like the Beatles at any period in their careers could be something more of a psychedelic nature, something that had an early Beatles sound. If you want to submit that to us, in which we'd play it at the beginning and the end of each show and credit you as well, then send us an MP3 to our email address, which once again is things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. And if people want to get in touch with you, Steve, there's a number of ways they can do that. And They can contact me on Facebook. I have my own Facebook page uh, under my name. And you can also write to me at BeatlesExaminer at gmail.com. And if you're interested, you can check out my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com, and you'll find lots of interviews with people in the Beatle world on there on the home page and lots of uh, great games and Beatles trivia that are posted every single week and I also give away lots of Beatle prizes of uh, new products out there on the Beatles that you hear mentioned in on this show and on Beatles Examiner. So and if you want to you can also email me at every little thing at att.net. I also have a Facebook page. My name's Ken Michaels. So you can look that up. And we should also say that for the first time ever, we have a contest here where we're going to give you folks the chance to win a brand new Beatle product. And that happens to be, tell them, Steve. It happens to be a copy of the new brand new Beatles Scrabble game that just came out. Hmm, okay. And this is from the folks that also put out Beatles Monopoly and the uh, Trivial Pursuit game. And that's the folks at uh, USAopoly. And if you'd like to win, all you got to do is write to us at our email address. Boy, we're really plugging it this time, aren't we? We, re we really are. <laughs> yeah, it's things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. We'll just select one random fan who wrote in, and that person will win a copy of the Beatles Scrabble game. And uh, please do not send us a lot of entries. Just send us one email, one per listener. And we will pick one of you, and uh, that person will be lucky enough to win the new Beatles Scrabble game. Thanks for listening to Things We Said Today. This is Steve Marinucci, Beatles Examiner, and we'll see you next time. And I'm Ken Michaels for Things We Said Today. And like Steve said, we'll see you next time.